60,000 thoughts go through a person's brain each and every day. It has been since the beginning of time, and hey, but I got to tell you, oh, that's only if you're conservative. If you're a liberal, four thoughts a day go through your brain. You know what? When you're born, everything is kind of normal, but you lose all your brain cells the minute you decide to vote liberal. And there's a bunch of them walking around. They walk among us, CNN. I have a television set that's always on CNN. Ugh, it's painful. I have another television set right beside it that's always on Fox News. And I sometimes feel like I'm on two different planets. Wow, the reporting, one's full of opinions and bad stuff and is all aimed at Trump negatively, and the other is, you know, reality for the most part. There's always a little bit of stuff in everybody. I get it, but you know, I got to tell you, CNN, ah, they're wild, wild folk. Here's a medical uh, expert, expert out of CNN, and he says, I am concerned about the potential spread of the virus because the White House had people there sitting beside each other and everything else and visiting and talking. Ah, this was during the Republican National Convention. But you know what? The very next day, there were uh, tens and tens of thousands of demonstrators. They showed up in front of the White House. They walked everywhere in Washington with their little signs and all their stupid stuff and et cetera, et cetera. And this same guy, he said, God bless them, you know, I praise them. And he did praise him, Dr. Rob Davison. Oh my, <laughs> what's up with these guys? It's okay, well, it's typical liberal. It's okay if it's something I like. But if I don't approve of the content, well then of course the freedom of speech thing doesn't apply to you. It goes on and on. You know what, um, you risk every mitigation procedure that you can, he went on to say, about Trump, about the Republican convention. And he kept on saying that it's okay to march. We love it. 50,000 people, more or less. Arr, Congress. You know what? Stupid just keeps getting stupider all of the time. They now want to vote to raise the national age to purchase alcohol. Pardon me. Tobacco. Blah, blah, I'll get it. Tobacco products from 18 to 21. Okay? That's kind of a big deal. That eliminates a whole bunch of people from buying cigarettes because Big Brother's trying to look after you and everything else. And blah, blah, blah. Congress, though, just can't figure it out, apparently, when you're an adult. You can go to war at 18. Actually, I think it's 17. You can shoot at people. They can shoot at you. And yet you can't buy cigarettes, okay? Um, I think that in a free country, you should be able to have a little bit of freedom, right? If you're old enough to make decisions about marriage, abortion, or whether or not you can buy a firearm, sure to the goodness you can make the same decision as to whether or not you want to buy a cigarette. And oh, also, there's another thing, marijuana. This goes on in Canada. In Canada, somewhat in the U.S. as well, you have to put your cigarettes in the store behind a curtain so nobody can see them, and the packages have to be very bland, and they can't have advertising on them because you don't want to encourage anybody to smoke, right? But you now have marijuana shops everywhere with lights and, and messages and... Wow, it's sexed right up and come here and get high, but don't smoke a cigarette, right? Because it's bad for your health. And these same people in the House now are voting, uh, preparing to vote on an historic uh, marijuana bill, right? It'll decriminalize marijuana by removing it from the Controlled Substances Act. Pot is already legal in 11 states. And so, you know, they say we need to tax this because we'll make money. I guess they're looking at Colorado and other places, good models. In terms of the tax revenue, look at Canada. I mean, Canada, they did this big deal about going legal uh, federally, nationally, and they did. But there's never been a mention of it since with regard to tax revenue. I mean, the theory is, the fact, according to a liberal in Canada, is, is that they're going to make so much money legalizing marijuana that we'll be swimming in dough, right? <laughs> well, how come you keep adding other taxes? The carbon tax and so many other taxes in Canada have been imposed since the marijuana tax. So it's kind of like pot was a bust or something. Uh, who knows? Jason Kennedy, 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 not Kennedy, Kennedy, you'll understand. He's in Alberta. He's the premier. He's now warning of the biggest deficit in the history of Alberta by a country mile. Revenue has collapsed. Isn't that interesting? You know, I always marvel a bit at that but because revenue is supposed to come from taxes and I appreciate that people don't pay their taxes now like they used to. COVID and, and a whole bunch of other things have happened, but the revenue shouldn't be the country mile thing, should it? Unless you're in business. And I think the Alberta government, like so many governments, are a little bit in business. They, they count on revenues that probably they shouldn't have in the first place. They're in the banking industry. They're in the golf industry. They're in a bunch of different businesses and, and governments shouldn't 
be in business. They have no business being in business. In my humble opinion, that ain't so humble, hey. Joe Biden, he should drop out of the running so the country can begin to heal. But half the time he forgets that he's even running, so I'm not so sure that that would matter. CNN, you know what, they continue to portray themselves as this, and I've already talked about them, but they make me crazy. I have to keep on talking about them. They say we're unbiased. We have reporters who are Trump supporters, right? <laughs> reporters that are supporters. Uh, really? I, I don't think so. That, that's um, To work at CNN and be a supporter of the president is kind of like working at Safeway in the meat department and being a vegetarian. Probably doesn't happen very often, if ever. Just sharing with you. Okay, what have I got? I got more stuff. Lastly, I got the world's most expensive sheep that's sold at an auction sale. It's an obscene amount of money. $490,000 for a little lamb. Bad day, don't you know? I gotta tell you the guy who bought it, I think he got fleeced. Y'all come back here tomorrow and we're gonna have more for you from the right. Ideas, solutions, all kinds of stuff. See ya.